The Book of the Damned, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 12b. So astronomy and its seemingly exact little system. But data we shall have of round worlds and spindle-shaped worlds, and worlds shaped like a wheel, worlds like titanic pruning hooks, worlds linked together by streaming filaments, solitary worlds, and worlds in hordes. Tremendous worlds and tiny worlds. Some of them made of material like the material of this earth, and worlds that are geometric super constructions made of iron and steel, or not only fall from the sky of ashes and cinders and coke and charcoal and oily substances that suggest fuel, but the masses of iron that have fallen upon this earth, wrecks and flotsam and fragments of vast iron constructions, or steel. Sooner or later we shall have to take up an expression that fragments of steel have fallen from the sky, if fragments not of iron, but of steel, have fallen upon this earth. But what would a deep sea fish learn even if a steel plate of the wrecked vessel above him should drop and bump him on the nose? Our submergence in a sea of conventionality of almost impenetrable density. Sometimes him a savage who has found something on the beach of his island. Sometimes him a deep sea fish with a sore nose. The greatest of mysteries. Why don't they ever come here, or send here, openly? Of course there's nothing to that mystery if we don't take so seriously the notion that we must be interesting. It's probably for moral reasons that they stay away, but even so, there must be some degraded ones among them, or physical reasons. When we can specially take up that subject, one of our leading ideas, or credulities, will be that near approach by another world to this world would be catastrophic. That navigable worlds would avoid proximity, that others that have survived have organized into protective remotenesses, or orbits which approximate to regularity, though by no means to the degree of popular supposition. But the persistence of the notion that we must be interesting, bugs and germs and things like that, they're interesting to us. Some of them are too interesting. Dangers of near approach, nevertheless our own ships that dare not venture close on to rocky shore can send robots ashore. Why not diplomatic relations established between the United States and Siberia, which, in our advanced astronomy, is the name of a remarkable wheel-shaped world or super-construction? Why not missionaries sent here openly to convert us from our barbarous prohibitions and other taboos, and to prepare the way for a good trade in ultra-bibles and super-whiskies, fortunes made in selling us cast-off super-fineries, which we'd take to like an African chief to someone's old silk hat from New York or London? The answer that occurs to me is so simple that it seems immediately acceptable if we accept that the obvious is the solution of all problems, or if most of our perplexities consist in laboriously and painfully conceiving of the unanswerable, and then looking for answers, using such words as obvious, and solution, conventionally.